when did we become like a thing? Because it used to be a weeaboo, which is straight up like an insult to someone that just like fetishizes Asia, specifically Japan. Yeah. Is like really obnoxious and gatekeepy. Um, so just like how the African American community took back the N word, we took back the W word. Yes. Let's let's equate. <laughs> let's equate like. Media, hundreds of years, media, of, slavery. Hundreds of years of slavery, <laughs> trying to overcome hardship and literally being put down for the color of your skin to <laughs> liking a type of animation. <laughs> That's right. One to one equals rise up, my brothers. <laughs> my brother. That's got to be racist. <laughs> I still don't know what weeb actually means. Um, so. I don't actually know where it comes from either. Yeah, I don't know where the word originally, but yeah, originally was weeaboo, used as an insult. Now it's just used, oh, just as oh, it's just a the word to describe us. Collective term. Us. Yes. <laughs> where does weeaboo come from? It's going to say Japan. <laughs> Manga. Anime. Japanophilia. Ooh, that Wait, is that a direct translation? What? No, 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 no. <laughs> that sounds great. Um... <laughs> Okay, so uh, should I do my like proper announcer voice? <clears throat> okay, you do you. In the early 2000s, derogatory slang terms were created to refer to people who are obsessed with Japanese popular culture. The term wa Wapanese <laughs> from white Japanese. <laughs> I thought it was going to be Western Japanese. Or possibly also wannabe Japanese first emerged in 2002 as a derogatory term for a non-Japanese, particularly Huat, person who is obsessed... You need to do it in the, in the Pokedex voice. No, you're getting very close to the Pokedex um, voice. Kieran, give, me, give, me, give me a C. What's that? Uh, <laughs> it uses its <clears throat> tail to... Okay. Yeah, that's how it sounds. First emerged in 2002 as a derogatory <laughs> term for non-Japanese, particularly Huat, <laughs> person who is obsessed with Japanese culture, particularly anime, manga, <laughs> <laughs> visual <laughs> novels, and light novels. Light novels. The term weeaboo, often shortened to weeb, came from the webcomic The Perry Bible Fellowship in which the word had no meaning other than something <laughs> unpleasant. <laughs> An administrator on, for, oh, of course, 4chan, added a filter on the site to change Wapanese to Weeaboo. Ah. But users on the site quickly picked up the word and applied it in an abusive way in place of the already <laughs> existing term Wapanese. The terms Weeaboo and Weeb, while originally, originally derogatory, have also been reclaimed <laughs> <We. laughs> by some of those to whom they originally referred, seeing increased usage by fans of Japanese media to refer to themselves in an ironic or self-deprecating fashion. Damn, that is, I had no idea. That is hilarious. You guys thought, and you guys thought I was joking when I was making a comparison. Reclamation, <laughs> dude. Taking back the power. <laughs> But uh, I don't know, because this kind of leads into what Netflix is doing now, where they're just calling anything an anime. Like the new like Tomb Raider anim animated series, you're like, it's a Tomb Raider anime. Or the new Term Terminator animated series, like we're making a Terminator anime. Like, yeah, it's just animated it's, series. Like, it's popular not, to have an anime. To just right? say that it's called, it's an anime now. Should yeah. we settle this debate right here, right now? For well, me, I've thought about up? it a lot. For me, it's just, it's anime, because anime means animation in japanese correct me if i'm wrong right if it comes from the east if it's created there originally <laughs> and... okay, so... <laughs> sorry what? just referring it to the east because technically then the problem with that though is then you have like manhwa and you have same th things that look exactly like anime but from they the come east. out of korea That's or they the come east. out of That's china the east. but if something anime being the japanese word for an animation then so you want to say you want to say then exclusive to japan but that i want to say requires... anything that comes out of a japanese animated st uh, studio is an anime or is it about the look okay so then what do we call things from china is it like a chinese anime is it a chinese cartoon is it 
a Chinese animation. I don't like the way Ch saying Chinese cartoon. That's triggering. Yeah, I why? Know. Why? Because back China. when I back when like when I was younger, like whenever I'd watch anime, my dad would be like, "Why are you watching those Chinese cartoons?" Uh, dude, I was watching fairly re like in the last five years. I was here at my parents' house, and I was watching an anime like out loud on my phone. Mm -hmm. And that's um, your first mistake. <laughs> No, but I think it was it was like a shonen or something. I can't even remember. But my mom was just like, Bjorn, what, what are you watching? <laughs> what is that? What is this? I think her like, genealogy remembered the ally, not the ally, <laughs> <laughs> the Axis <That's> powers. <laughs> and she was like, why do I understand each and every word? <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so... Okay, yeah. I want to say anything that comes out of a Japanese studio is considered an anime. Okay. Yeah. So then we need a different name for animation type things that come from every country. Well, animated films is the West. No. No. Well, no because that's too general then. Oh. Because the, the rule, it, you can't call only things from Japan or a Japanese studio. Well, no, that, okay. Anything from Japan that is animated would then be an anime. Yes. Right? So it's, And remember, there's a range of styles within that. Yes. You have... Doraemon, which obviously leans to what well, I would say a more cartoonish style. Then you have Psycho Pass, which is a lot more gritty, uh, a lot more real. There's so such a big like. But that's a, that's the same in let's say now Western animation. Yeah, you get like your Blues Clues, and then on the other side you get is is Blues Amazon? Clues animated? Yeah, isn't that Bluey? Do you mean Bluey? I mean Bluey. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, and that's from Australia. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you got so many things wrong. <laughs> what did the West do? <laughs> Dude, branding and... Okay, sorry. Branding and um, Mr. Mr. Whiskers. Whiskers. <laughs> that um, was your go-to. Uh, <laughs> I do not uh, know. Kim Possible. Let's say Kim Possible. Next door. Kim yeah. Possible. Banger. Banger. Um, uh, uh, Looney and then, Tunes. And then Boomerang, you, right? Yeah, then you got like the other side. We go Avatar, which yes. you know is one of the biggest so here's the right thing right because if we if we say something that an is anime is a style that is you can't you that's immediately thrown out the window that's because, why i'm not saying style that's why i okay. said location wise studio. okay but then we need to come up with a name for each country's animation like if we because we have some animation studios here in south africa so what do we call that oh exactly we what do we call it just an I animation. think I think because of would we have to I use, mean it's literally called the animation industry. I think because in of this, the impact that uh Japanese animation has had on the world it deserves to have its own word. Mm. I don't think everything should have its own word. Do you think if it's adapted from a manga then it is anime? I'll tell you what, if it's adapted from a manga mm -hmm. and but it's done in a studio that's based out of America, then is it still I would say not not anime. So the closer word for animation is opapai. Okay. That actually goes hard. That actually goes fucking hard. <laughs> no joke. Should we? So if so, then we say South African animation, like anime, would then be opapai. Double O P O P A Y I. I'm in. I'm done. We just do that for every single language. So when are you guys gonna oh, make your own anime? Wait, hold on. But I mean opapai. What, what is, what is the most Australia. spoken language in South Africa? Uh. uh is it not Zulu? also? No, it, it might, might be Zulu, Zulu yeah. dude. It might actually be Zulu. If we're doing by based on country, then Australia has to be Aussie Nations. <laughs> <laughs> because th Ooh, that dude, sounds Dude, Zulu's cool. not bad. Izzy Tombe. Izzy Tombe. Which do you prefer? Is... Opapai or Izzy Tombe? I think I like Opapai better. Right? Yeah. Uh, it, it, it is a bit, maybe a bit more unique. Mm. Um, but so we just need to find the like most spoken language in like in every country so for instance um what's it um where did i go you're gonna go for french or something no dude i'm trying to remember. where did i live for three months oh vietnam in, uh, no uh, <laughs> no. Uh, austria no australia no guys it's it's next to malaysia above indonesia oh singapore my. no I have no idea it's on the like on the thailand no, to towards the east, please. What's to the east? Philippines. I lived in the Philippines. You went in the Philippines, right? Yes, man. You went Nam. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, I was. I lived that. in the Philippines. Okay. Um, and the language, the few I'm assuming really bad words they taught me were in Cebuano, which is like a regional language, but the official language of the Philippines is Tagalog. Oh right? yeah. Or Tagalog, yeah. depending oh, on. I was gonna say One Piece. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Dude, hold on. I That's only, gotta be. I only <laughs> know. Be. Filipinos love One Piece. Um, I only know this because I watch Bad Friends and Rudy Jules. Shout out. She is Filipino. Filipino, and she uses. She also said it's Tagalog or like pronounced like that or something. Tagalo. Yeah. So th- I was taught that it was pronounced Tagalo, um, but I've I've heard different pronunciations from like a variety of people. Um, Wiz, um, why am I not getting Tagalo as? He's spelling it right. Yeah, it's it's spelled Tagalog essentially. <laughs> Tag- oh, Filipino Tag- is yeah. well, fair enough. Um, so in. The Philippine and Philippi. Oh well, <laughs> that's this, easy. This animation. Animation, simple. That's gotta be racist. No, no, no. <laughs> I've just repeated it, <laughs> dude. I'm pretty fluent in in Google's version of Filipino, Google. apparently. AI. Yeah, but okay. So back to the original. I say anime should just be reserved the word just for that, just for. Just kind of just like not a reward, but what's <laughs> you did what's good the word? Japan. Yeah. You did well yeah. It is different. It's a different style. Mm, for sure. And, yeah. Well, no, it isn't. Well Star- look, we cannot say style. There's something different. I don't know what it is. They're speaking in Japanese. Anime is just better. No, because if you like if I go back to the two things I said from Netflix earlier, um, Terminator and Tomb Raider, I don't know if you've seen the trailers for them. That is a very and that is a very like anime style, like a traditional anime style. You can we say anime inspired, mm. but they're Western studios, as far as I know. Okay. But then you also get like Ghibli films, which aren't ref- like they don't like it when you refer to them as anime films. They're like this is a, this is a Ghibli like movie. This is like I think a- that's more of a branding thing on their part okay. to set themselves apart. I don't think because maybe in Japan anime refers more to like serialized TV show. Like and again, anime just means animation. Mm. Like when I think of Ghibli, uh, I think well, of like <laughs> please switch up. I'm like fluent. When, yeah, in Ghibli is like high qual. Like I think of high quality, like the best. Mm. But then I think about like what if they like three D, right? And I'm not talking about when we every every now and again when we get a really bad three D anime in the like seasonal wrap yeah. up. But I'm like, you still get a variety of different um, animated movies mm. that are three D or animated TV shows that are three D, all that kind of stuff. We're so talking is, now like Shrek and stuff. Yeah. So think about Pixar, think about Disney 3D kind of films, but obviously out of Japan. So does that make them anime? Well, the thing is I've never seen like a 3D uh, movie like that out of out of Japan. Or at least none that's like... Like popular. I'm sure they do make, but none of the other yeah, that are popular enough that uh, it's talked about here uh, on the other side of the world. Okay. Or at least halfway through the world. I mean, to be fair, we've what here in South Africa we made like Jock of the Bushveld. Yeah, you guys remember? So, but I, I'm telling that's not like not releasing worldwide. That's I know, but like it's the same Steel kind of team? thing, right? Yeah. Odds on, that, no one in I'm Japan saying. is like, I fucking love <laughs> Jock of the Bushveld, bro. <laughs> I relate to it so hard. Um, a lot of these are just, I guess, based on anime. That's interesting. Oh, there was the Pokemon one they did in like the 3D style. Stand by me, Doraemon Harlock Space Pirate. I don't know if it's based on an anime. One Piece, One Piece. Oh, One Piece has scoopers. some 3D animation. Yes. But this is 1987. That's not 3D. Maybe the are, oh, these are just list. Japanese movies. Yeah, that list doesn't seem to understand what you're looking for. Okay, because in in but Western I'm, I'm culture you, we do have there's that uh, uh, Pokemon con- concierge. Um... Oh, dude, so good. But that's that's um. Wait, was that claymation or was it 3D? I feel like I read... Ah, dude, it's so beautiful. Pokemon Concierge, uh, for those that don't know, just follows a woman that comes to an island resort and um, she learns how to be a concierge at a a hotel for Pokemon. Nice. And it's all about um, finding your Pokemon partner and then you two together work to help, like, trainers and their Pokemon grow their bonds and to relax. So, so, so cute. I um, highly recommend to watch it. But it is, it looks like claymation. But I may have read somewhere that it is, in fact. I'm pretty sure it's, it's 3D. I don't think it's claymation. Three, it's or a blend of the two at the very least. Um, let me just quickly look this up. Constant While we're on the topic of Pokemon, the um, 
it's actually now been the longest we have gone without um any um teaser or any type of information on a pokemon game really yeah so since legends za was announced there's been no other information since and so this is never this never gone like this long of a silence period from game freak and nintendo wait when was it i feel like ZA was announced like five months ago no earlier than that really but still dude time flies i've, I've got no concept of time right still, now. still i feel like it was, it was even announced last year officially mm-hmm. like the the logo whatever but this is has been the longest and so now the community is split in half about being really worried yeah and being and being super excited well, why would they be worried, right? Because there's no way... Because there's nothing to show and we usually have like yearly releases for Pokemon, even though this is booked in for 2025. Yeah. I mean, I actually, I think this year we won't have any Pokemon games released, which I think... Which? M- okay, so... It's been the first time in a while. Okay, if we think about like Assassin's Creed Shadows, otherwise known as Assassin's Creed Japan, um, thinking about the fact that... Um, but not Is it Bethesda? No, it's not Bethesda. It's Ubisoft. 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 They were on the yearly model and went to shit. And now they've gave, given a bit of a gap and allowed the development time on Shadows, which looks we, We've impressive. talked about this. But uh, they, yeah, but they've given a gap, different studios. But what was the gap between Valhalla and um, Shadows? I think, and I remember we did discuss this uh, you, when the initial trailer came out. about this, yeah. It might be 2022 or 2021. So what, no, years. 2020. Dude, I... Either way, there yeah, was a bit I, of a gap. I remember they, because we, we looked into this, and they not only just dividing it, um, not not they dividing it by studios now. Um, so just sorry, correction. Uh, Valhalla came out in 2020. There was DLC that came out later, but Shadows is scheduled for this year, November. So that's a four-year gap, but different studios, I think. Yeah. Are so that's that's their new plan now. Instead of doing yearly, well, instead of doing yearly. Uh, move move back to give more space and give it to different studios mm. so even though it looks like there's like a three-year gap between a game if it's it's if you look by studio it could be like a seven-year gap between the last time that studio actually put out yeah. that ubisoft studio put out a game so which honestly much better could, could bode well for pokemon because they've definitely stagnated i i find the last couple of games uh, i was talking about ubisoft so we so just I was using that oh, yeah, as an okay. example, right, of a studio that maybe is giving a bit more space um, to for things to be in development. And yes, I don't. That doesn't mean it always lands, but it does tend to mean higher quality games, or at least games bigger in scope. So maybe if Game Freak and the Pokemon Company are just allowing you are just allowing um, the like teams to develop the game a bit longer. Yeah. It could hopefully, and I suppose that's what you mean by like half the fan half base the, is excited, half yeah, of them are is scared. worried just because they're worried they're not seeing anything. Because you know they're like little children; you need keys to be dangled in front of them, <laughs> but jingling. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I'm not worried, but I'd like something, just like a picture okay. <laughs> or something. Okay. Give me some, yeah, dangle some keys in front of me. Well, look, I mean, at least you know what you are. <laughs> um, actually, yeah. you did remind me of something um, from Gamescom specifically. It's been talked about a bit, but um, Inzoi, I know we, we talked about it briefly. Oh, yes, the, the Sims killer. So I actually went and did a surprising <laughs> amount of research last night nice. on Inzoi. Uh, it's a beautiful looking game. Okay, so um, do, you, do you guys know what it's about? No. Yes, to extent. Yes. Okay. So well, I understand. It's, it's basically like Sims, where you create a character and you live through daily life. And from what we've seen, the level of detail, especially yeah. in, so you can right now download and play the character creator for free. It's on Steam, and the level of detail that the character creation goes into is actually insane. Mm. Um, it seems very cool, and um. A big part of the game itself when it comes to building and decorating and so on is the ability to use generative AI on like your clothing or making artworks or patterns and stuff for your furniture, for your clothes, for artworks. There's like some very cool integration Mm. there. Um, And obviously the very obvious comparison is to The Sims. Yeah, so so The Sims would be kind of like a wackier version than this where this is much more like down to earth Mm. and grounded. It also seems like there's actually a story. So, really? um, from what I've seen, it has to do with the fact that you are essentially like a god in training, 
and your boss is a cat. And it's all about um, controlling the city with regards to like weather and, I don't know, level of, I don't know, uh, the amount of marriages and the amount of traffic and a lot, a bit of a god sim mixed into the Sims game. So there's a storyline and it's all about... So City Builder? No. Um, mixed in with it. It's, it's like city strategy, but you're not actually like building the city. Mm. You're very much living your life. And there have been some, some things about like having to do chores and like very, it's very detailed from what I've seen. But I got to be honest, guys, mm. a lot of red flags were going off in my brain. Why? Why? What, what, did, what did you see? It's, it's too detailed. It's like it, every time we've been promised like, uh, what was the game that came out and it was a full rug pull where they just uh um the the, the, the last the day, game, the day before the yeah the day before or something like that mm? i'm not sure i don't remember this conversation oh it, was, it, was, it was one of it was <laughs> like one of our earlier episodes where we did like a proper deep dive the day before what was it um video game rug pull scam scam I'm getting really good at typing. With one hand. The, is it the day before? The day I said it's the day before. Go images. At the end of the day, dude, it's the night. Yeah. No, it's not the day before. It is the day before. Either way, so this was a game where it was like destructible environments and like the level of detail in the looter shooter and the hand placed, handcrafted environments. Just the sheer amount of detail was like incredibly impressive. Mm. And same with Inzoi, I'm seeing this thing of like, oh, you can you can decorate everything to this degree. You can drive places. You can you can do so much stuff. Every like you're living the life of a essentially like a of a Zoi. That's what they call them. You are living the life of a Zoi. My problem with that is, we would have seen this before. Like they might. It it's. Did you look at the history of the? Game studio? So, Crafton, Crafton Inc., they are a publisher and um, a developer. Oh. So, for instance, Subnautica, which was developed by someone else who I can't remember right now, they were published by Crafton. Crafton? Uh, Play Unknown's Battlegrounds was um, published by Crafton Inc., or at least partially. Um, so, they, they have some big games under their belt, but just the the... Every time we've seen a game that promises like to be this, it's not about being a cut above the rest. It's about the amount to which they are a cut above the rest. A great, great example is like Baldur's Gate 3, which genuinely is an insane cut above the rest. But we saw the development. They had funding for like seven years through, um, was it Patreon or Kickstarter? Either way, they were like... I don't think Kickstarter is a thing anymore. I think it's just Patreon. Is Kickstarter still a thing? I still, it so. is hundred percent still yeah. a thing. Um, but Baldur's Gate three, we we saw the, like the lead up to it. We saw how um, the what's it the the lead developer or the CEO of um, what's the studio that made Baldur's Gate? Uh, Larian um, Studios. Yeah, Larian. Right. We saw how they made the Divinity games in order to petition to get the rights to make uh, yeah. Baldur's Gate three. We saw we can see everything leading up to it, and I'm looking at Crafton or Crafton. And I'm like, this doesn't, something doesn't add up here. So while I'm I'm hopeful, I think it's good for EA to have competition for The Sims, which has just been shit since Sims 2. Um, it's this, I am like, I think healthily skeptic. Yeah. I think we've been wronged before. But doesn't the fact that this um, studio has these other titles under their belts alleviate some of those flags? Because at least for, like, for the day before, it was like, nobody knew who that. Fair, very fair. But... I don't know. I'm just. I'm. I feel like I'm. I feel like I need to be skeptical about Inzoi. Does Inzoi have a release for this year, or is it like a 2025? Inzoi. Inzoi. Um. Let me just. Ch I. I don't think there is a release. Inzoi release date. Um. It early access towards the end of 2024. Well, so I guess hmm. we'll be able to see what happens at 2024. I guess so. But maybe what happens is they get all this hype going because they've made a lot of um. Thing, what's it? They've had a lot of interaction with social media or content creators. Yeah. 
that are quite big in the sim space especially mm. and they've allowed them like 15 hours to play through some parts of the game mm. um and obviously this whole thing of releasing the character creator i was about to say you were, you were waxing lyrical about it dude it's phenomenal it is it is crazy but, that, how but you still have red flags even after seeing that yes because that's more than the day before yeah, gave us it, no, it, I'm not saying it is a one-to-one -one with the day uh, yeah, before, yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's also, it is this thing of like, yeah, for instance, like, what if the character creator is about as detailed as it gets, or like, they, they've put all their love into it, and then it, you just can't, you can't have that amount of detail put into every part of the game. Like, you do the here. character creation as soon as they, like, walk out. It's like, you know that meme where it's like, uh, the animation in a cutscene versus, versus the... <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it is, it is, I don't know, just slight alarm bells. Cause also there's a, like in the trailer, they promise, um, that you can essentially import 3d models to help decorate your home That's cool. and like color them and just essentially have complete freedom with decorating Ooh. and building. That they may take that out, knowing when Which people is, try to bring in. And then, so on. I did a bit of Reddit digging, and I think what most people think is a, a bit of a red flag or worth worrying about is that they set all this up, build all this hype, in order to sell a game that has the most amount of microtransactions we've ever fucking seen in any game ever. Oof, damn. That is a potential, it's like, oh, if you want this amazing feature, gotta buy it. Um, if you want They're to not have- not EA though. I could see EA doing that. Based on the trend in gaming, I I see, it's it's viable. I'd, yeah. I'm not 100% so certain, yeah. but it's definitely- it's valid. There's no way that you've made this kind of game and it hasn't crossed the like minds of every CEO ever. <laughs> so that's one thing from Gamescom that um, I saw and did a bit of digging into. But we've I think we've known about Enzoi for a while. I just only caught on to it now. Yeah, it's been a thing for a while, but they had more release trailers than they have in the past mm. at Gamescom. Com. Um. <laughs> Anyways, what else do you guys see from Gamescom? I know we talked a bit, but I can't. Borderlands Four. <sighs> okay, Border. who should go off the game? They do. Two K, not know how to read a room. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what was your theory last night about this? The the whole thing with the movie and then the game and then... so I'm thinking they probably thought the movie was gonna be like a smash hit, and people are gonna be like frothing, and then they're going to drop the Borderlands 4 trailer and people are going to be like, oh my God, it's finally here. And then, you know, just going to keep building on this Borderlands 4 uh, hype train off the movie. Mm -hmm. And the movie was what it was. Mm. <laughs> I think it's still single digits on Rotten Tomatoes. Not that, you know, that's like the be all end all uh, on if you see a movie or not. But when I guess when like audience scores are like that low, it usually says something. Unless it's review bombing. Yeah. Um, oh. oh, man. I don't want to go off on a tangent, but the Acolyte, I don't know if you know. No, guys it's, it's, it's in double digits, my guy. Of a... What? It's on, nice. what is it on? So it's on 10%. Whoa. Out of 149. 53% audience score, and so it's up. The, uh, what we've talked about ratings before, though, we're like, Technically, a five out of ten means it just functions as a film, mm. or like it it functions as a game. That doesn't mean it's good. It's about as low as it can get without being completely unwatchable or unplayable. Mm. So, being at fifty three three percent, it means it's three percent above being just a complete mess and garbage, unwatchable thing. Um, but okay, so it's unwatchable. <laughs> unwatchable. <laughs> they change so much of the story, man. That thing just doesn't make sense. I, I know I sent you guys a video that kind of like summed up the weird choices they made. I don't know if you guys watched it. No. Nah, that's <laughs> great. I'm going to be honest. But I don't know. I, I, like, I talked a lot about it in last week's episode. Like, you know, go go watch that episode. I don't want to rehash too much. But not a good movie. Um, And you you said they were hoping that it smashed. Yeah, because that to me like, makes sense. Like, you want to keep building on this. And then maybe every month just like, Maybe do a character character reveal, uh, villain reveal, maybe, and just to keep building up because this is Borderlands Four is scheduled to come out in twenty twenty five. 
Right. Probably like a June, July release, if I'm taking a wild guess. When was Borderlands? Oh, no. Between Borderlands 3 and now, we had Tiny Tina's um, the D&D yeah, the, one? Yeah, the DLC. Was it a DLC? Or, it was a standalone game, wasn't it? No, it was it? a DLC. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry. Um, yeah, they do a lot of DLCs. Well, they've always done this between... Uh, their releases they put out a real a lot of like quality like DLCs mm -hmm. stuff. Um, but yeah, so we got Borderlands Four coming out. I don't know what I want now because Borderlands Three was still you know same humor. Um, I mean the gameplay is still like you know the gameplay like if you enjoyed the first Borderlands you'll still enjoy Borderlands Three. Uh, the characters abilities were pretty cool I guess, but it just feels like they've kind of hit a wall. Mm. with the with the series mm. who's who develops borderlands 2k 2k right yeah. uh gearbox software and 2k okay do you rate do you rate they should just let the series like end because it they, it had its heyday and i think you've mentioned before like the comedy worked at the time yeah it now is, it, it kind of it doesn't it's it doesn't. like it's now dated comedy okay it's like that very like that period from 2008 to 2012 type humor that okay. edgy, almost edgy kind of edgy like, wacky, you know, yeah. Which does it doesn't really work anymore. I mean, I would love that you know they've learned from Borderlands Three and the insane story decisions they made in that game, um, and they'll rectify a lot of that in Four. But I think for me, if the characters are pretty cool, I'll definitely give it another go because they. I, I will say this: they have had, you know, maybe at this point, twenty three different playable characters. And okay. each one have been super unique and super fun to uh, play as. It gives those characters actually give the games huge replayable va replayable value because you can play with each character in each each of those different characters in each of the game, and you can have a completely different experience due to the skill set of that character, okay. which adds a lot, I think, to replay value. It, Borderlands doesn't. It's not a game that like you have choices, right? It's very linear. It's kind of real. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so, it's an RPG. Well, no, that that means it's not an RPG. Because RPG probably means that you have choices. You can role play. Um, Pokemon's an RPG. Pokemon is not an RPG. Pokemon's it has RPG, RPG elements. Pokemon is an RPG. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> let me just let me just take a moment. RPG role, role playing, playing game, game means you get to role play as whoever you want. Yeah. And it means uh, there are a lot of role playing elements that we see in modern games, but that doesn't mean they're actually role playing games. They might have the role playing game tag. They, Hushav, if you go on Steam and you're like, why does it have the fucking tag? I know it has a fucking tag. Okay? Look at my eyes. Puts phone away. <laughs> Look at my <laughs> I, I know what you're going to do. I know. I always know what you're going to do. The point being, oh, this is this is a fin unfinished versus live. Okay. It's yeah, just this is a live service. Role playing game. RPG is a tag that is tacked on to a lot of game because it sells. Like crafting or whatever. But that doesn't actually mean they are role-playing games. It's just a similar to, to our survival um, argument where the, our survival is tacked onto a lot of stuff. Yes. So, for instance, Baldur's Gate 3 is genuinely... An RPG. A, yes, yes. Because you will have almost full autonomy obviously within the bounds of the game world Yeah. as this character you embody. You get to role-play in this game versus you. there are elements like leveling and like choosing where to invest skill points choose, but like pokemon might have certain but it is very clear i am role playing no, as no, a pokemon no, no, trainer no no. Uh, no 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 gotta catch them all no 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 it is role playing me it's like D D is a role playing game you have almost full autonomy within the bounds of this game world to be whoever you want to be like in whatever campaign you go but <laughs> It doesn't make like you role playing as a specific character where your choices are entirely limited to. So as soon as a game has branching choices, you say role playing. Not necessarily, but that's a good. That's a marker of an RPG. It's cho like choosing your own skills, choosing your like kind of background, being able to follow through on the story that you've built for your character. Skill, but having a skill tree and developing your skill tree and choosing the skills RPG. Th those are RPG elements, elements mm -hmm. yeah. right? Versus, so you could so have those in a game, okay. But it could still like The Witcher, mm -hmm. right? Has a lot of elements, but because you are playing as Geralt, and your choices are very limited in the sense that they are things that only like Geralt would or wouldn't do. 
makes but it. But then, what? What's okay? So what's your definitive? It has this. It is an RPG, not RPG. It's elements. not. It's not. I think it's a bit it's, of both. It's a lot of things. Like it has to have a lot of things to make it an RPG. It can't just have like one or two elements. It has to have like five out of a possible ten or whatever to make it actually be an RPG. The moment you are railroaded, technically. I would say that The Witcher is more of an RPG. It is. It is very close. Mm. I'm not saying it isn't. Because you get to make a lot of choices as you well. You do get to make a lot of choices, but you are still playing as Geralt, mm. right? It's not like you come up to something and suddenly you can like fart on someone's face to knock them out, right? That would, Geralt physically would never do that. Mm. Um, your choices yeah. are limited to something that Geralt could feasibly do. Until Dawn, RPG? What did it, I don't know. It's a, that horror game where uh, we spoke about it the other week also. It's you're playing as those characters in... But you get to make choices which affect the story. But you can no, have... No, that's an interactive movie. It's like The Last of Us it, or something. Yeah. No, no, Until but Dawn is more of also. like a... I know, but it's essentially... It's it's an interactive movie. There's a difference. You're still as these characters. Wait, I you think say that, The Last of Us is an interactive movie? Yes. Really? Yes. I think it has some nice like stealth and gameplay elements. Mm -hmm. But it is, for the most part, telling a very it's a story clear game. story. It's a story game. With it's For me, like God of War is essentially... It's a movie that you get to interact with. Yeah, but that has lots of RPG elements in it. That mm. it, it's some God it of War, some, the latest God of War games. It has some RPG elements. You get tree. to level up and skill, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but this is what Bjorn to... was saying earlier about elements. But it is a story but game. But you are you are playing as Kratos. Right? So I would say like lots of things get the tag RPG. Yeah, like no, we dude, were saying, right? saying what I'm saying. No, no, I know, I know. I'm just I'm just summarizing. <laughs> right, like they get the tag because it has elements of RPG. Yes, correct. Not necessarily that it is like truly an RPG. Yes. Correct. That's what you're saying. What mm -hmm. what besides Baldur's Gate 3, what would you say is truly an RPG then? I mean, obviously D and D, but are we talking specifically video games? Let's say now? video games. Yeah. Um, I mean, Divinity Original Sin. Yeah, Divinity Original Sin is pretty good. Um, um, would you say Diablo? No. Because you're playing as what's the you get Diablo two? No, you, you get play, four classes to choose you, from. You you. Okay, and I I don't know enough about Diablo. Oh, okay, okay. Then we'll scratch that one. Um, but Diablo, you choose. You just choose a class. He, he's not really like that character really has that many like I think the if we want to like summarize it as one major thing it's being able to build a full backstory for your character and then follow through on that character throughout the game so like Knights of the Old Republic is RPG through and through uh, I haven't Skyrim? played it S oh dude Skyrim is one of those That's, I would love to say yes I think it is but it, uh, to some degree, it isn't because it's part of like this weird. It Skyrim is weirdly childish, and I love I love Skyrim, but it is incredibly railroady, and it's because of like needing to be on console and sell a bunch of stuff. It was like dumbed down to some degree to not have some elements that would make it like a really good RPG. Like choices don't exist in Skyrim; they do, but like barely. Whether you join the Stormcloaks or the, um, what's it, the Empire, whether you, um, like, there are some very simple choices, but nothing that necessarily, like, really lets you hammer home yeah. your, like, backstory in the I story. Saw, uh, I, I would argue I it's... understand where you come, but I would still wholeheartedly disagree with you on what an RPG is. <laughs> I, I think games like uh, God of War... Um, Horizon Zero Dawn. Assassin's, would you say Assassin's Creed is an RPG? I would say that's an RPG also. No, it's not. Uh, why would Assassin's Creed be an RPG? You play as a very defined character. You don't have your own backstory. So you define it by if, Creed, your you, if you make the character in the character yeah, creator. Yeah, me, I'm like, if I'm... Has no affiliation to a story. If I'm role-playing as someone... Just is in a world. Even if it's like I, I'm not like I'm not physically like D and D style role playing. But yeah. If it's like a character with their own story and I'm playing as them, I'm playing as that role. Ergo, role playing game. I think this is the problem here is like the words, right? It's we because of the way that like role playing. Yeah. It's it makes it a bit weird and gray mm. in terms of like what we think of it as because technically yes i am role playing as a trainer mm. in the world of pokemon but to me 
you are not bringing your own story into it. You are very clearly a 10-year-old child who's yeah. led to roam free in a world of very dangerous creatures. And I, I, I just role-playing in... game came from, like, uh, Table D&D. Top. Tabletop, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's so where it comes from. That is the purest sense. Mm-hmm. So I think if a game has enough of those D&D markers, yeah. yes, then it's an, it RPG. an RPG. But like you said, Horizons are Dawn. Has the tag is not an RPG. So I just typed in like top ten RPG games and clicked on the first games radar. What is this? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna read Rishav, off like what they Rishav, have. I know this is my issue. I You're know. gonna read off everything that I have I'm, an I'm issue just with. Gonna, you know, games radar, very prominent <sighs> gaming. All right. Um, they've got here at twenty four Horizon Forbidden West. Not an RPG. Um, twenty three. They had Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Not May, an RPG. It's got elements. 22, Divinity Original Sin 2. Yes. Yes. Uh, 21, Cyberpunk. Oh, so close, but no. 20, The Outer Worlds. Surely The Outer Worlds. Not The Outer World. Is it Outer Wilds? Fuck me. I always Outer get this World. confused. Wait, I got a question for you. Would you say Fable is an RPG game? No. Me. Okay. I don't know. Because I thought as, you'd as draw the line there. Play, oh, dude, and we can talk about Masters of Albion. Just oh, now, yeah. But like, Fable still has... It's a, a you're very clearly playing. There are choices. Yeah. There are skill trees. Um, there are oh wait are they sk- well kind of skill trees. Um, there's a lot of markers once again, but it's very dumbed down. Like imagine a skill tree with five points versus like fifty kind mm-hmm. of thing. It's simple. It's made incredibly simple to be as attractive to as many players as possible. Is it, also, is it also one of those where you can definitely like get everything in a skill tree? Because I, I also think games where you can't get every single yeah. skill and it forces you to make decisions yeah. leans where, more towards... To build your own character yeah. class, right? Well, then if but, you're talking about Diablo, then you have to say Diablo is an RPG because that's how Diablo works. But that's you, what I said. You I cut said, yourself I off. Said that's that, a, um, it's a good marker, but I don't, once again, yeah. I don't know enough about Diablo to be like, yeah, for sure. Or well, Diablo 2 specifically. I'll, okay. s- I'll speak for Diablo 2. <laughs> okay, keep going. Uh, uh, Pillars of Eternity. Don't know enough about that. To uh, say. Fire Emblem Three Houses. I've only played one. Fire Emblem? Fire and oh, mm. the, It's close. It's close, but it's not. It isn't. Because I love Fire Emblem. Dude. You do have a lot. The thing is, you have a full cast of characters with their own backstories. But um, you specific, I, I haven't played a Fire Emblem, so, but your character that you play specifically... No, you play as all of them. Mm. You play, so you, you play as, as you like go through the story of, of a Fire Emblem game, you will collect more and more playable characters to use on your like missions. And it's yeah. like a strategy game. Yeah. So it, it's close. I but would it, say it's, it's no RPG. Cigar. Do you know why? It's a because JRPG. there's so much chance in it. Like behind every attack and but stuff like that. But you're not making choices in the overarching story. Yeah, you, but it's, you got are making... the, it's got the random part. Like... No, it's a strategy Ooh. game. It's, yeah, it's, it's a not, strategy game, it's but it's not got a, RNG. It's not an RPG because it's the only choices you're making are in battle, like on like a on a strategy map. But if you're like if you play the game, if your dude dies, he, they they die, and no, then you for can't sure. keep them. So hundred percent, that, that that's RPG like, isn't it? It it it's an element, but that like I said, it's close, but it's not actually. It, Yo, you have a fine line. I don't know where line. your RPG like, line is, dude. It's. Like I said, it is the ability to build an entire like backstory for your character within this world and follow through on that character throughout you, the you, game. You, you want like a true definition of like an RPG where I think it's evolved. The, uh, it's he's basically saying mean. if it's not Dungeons and Dragons, then it's y- not an yeah, RPG. Yeah, that's like... No. Because that feels like that's the, what you, you want... An exclusive, a blank slate. Keep going down the list, and let's see if let's. Sorry, see. I just before I just want to call back to you yeah. said when you said because you said JRPG, another like instance where Japan has got its own word, uh, or it's like well, almost because JRPG we, we, doesn't that mean just J- it, Japanese RPG, but we don't distinguish like other countries. I always thought it meant junior because they what? always cause, cause, junior. I, okay, this might uh, seem incredibly dumb, but it's because they seem so juvenile. Like no, J- uh, JRPG is a Japanese to... role playing game. JRPGs are like um, anything from Japan that's no, a role playing game. Uh, what's that? What's that? It's Moda? Final Fantasy. Oh, uh, Gun- I'm not Gundam. <laughs> not Dota. Uh, um, the opposite the of Dota. The one that attracts all the weird people. What? Genshin. Yeah, Genshin. That's got to be that's a JRPG. A JRPG. Is it a JRPG? Oh, because you have you have multiple different characters. Oh, wait, no, it's Genshin Chinese. Mo- what's I've no Shmo-yo-ho. idea. Shmoyoho. What's the name of the company? I've no idea, guys. I think it's. I just know Genshin because, you know, streamers talk about Genshin sometimes. Is it Shmoyoho? <laughs> I don't fucking. It's 
Just put in Genshin Impact. Yeah, let me just do Genshin. I th I'm pretty sure Genshin is Japanese. Oh, we'll find out. Uh, developers are... Well, Mihoyo, uh, Mi Shanghai, Mi... Ooh, okay. it is not. <laughs> Publisher? Um. Okay, mainland China. China. Hmm. Okay, yeah, it is a Chinese That's company that made So, Genshin. CRPG. Wait, look at you go. Okay, let's just... Yeah, that's like, that's um, another instance where, like, Japan, where Japan has their own specific word for it. Where I we, mean, I mean, also, we have given, like, yeah, you know, anime. Because it has its own... But that, I think, is a style thing. It's your you think it's a style thing? It's a turn-based combat. Um, oftentimes, very similar storylines. Uh, fantasy elements. So you're describing Digimon and Pokemon. A lot, actually, yeah, a lot of the... Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. JRPG. They had JRPGs. I think, but, yeah. Well, speaking of Pokemon, the next thing on the list was Pokemon. <laughs> no, I think that's a hard no because uh, it's so railroad. Persona 5? I don't oh, know. Persona, Persona, Persona series of general. Uh, Diablo, which you said. Stardew Valley. No. No, it's not. It's No, it's not. You have Skill Tree? That's a cozy game. It, it, it has its own little corner. So for Stardew, yes, you technically can create a I am role-playing as a farmer. Come on. Like, I could, I can, like, farmer, uh, like, I role-play right? off the grid. So I can only build <laughs> off the grid. No going to town. You. The thing is, you are still going to be a farmer. Yeah. Um. You still, like, No, I can be a dungeon-clearing person and just focus on that. You could be a miner. <laughs> <laughs> a miner. Um, I don't know if Drake called you any <laughs> Like you guys are challenging my like prejudice here, but I don't yeah. think Stardew Valley is a, an RPG. That's what these arguments Dra are all about. Dragon's Dogma too. Yes, I think what's Dragon it? Age. Dragon Age, I think is uh, that's an RPG. Mm. Yeah. Bloodborne. No. I wonder if Souls it's Souls a, games might be here later. It's a dark fantasy action adventure. But, but RPG. think about in in the Souls games, all you can do, you can't choose to like. Um, talk someone out of attacking you mm. you are very clearly essentially doing but a long beyond, dungeon how many crawl. how many games can you like talk someone out of attacking you um oh undertale is an rpg undertale definitely i'd say uh, undertale, undertale is, a, is, a, is one of the truest rpgs in that you have a lot of like uh options. telltale games would you say rpg no there's interactive movies <laughs> what, okay. what about like zelda because that's like a classic. Once if you think again, of an RPG, really? Zelda, I wouldn't say that. No, Zelda isn't because. But I bet you it's at the top of this list. Well, it's very I, clearly you are playing as, as Link. Link. Yeah. Wait, what? You mean I'm not playing as Zelda? What? <laughs> well, except the, the new. The new one. The new one where you play as Zelda is actually more of an RPG for me than. Because um, really? you have to come up with creative puzzles and like a different way of playing. If you had the option. In but most... old school, old school Zelda games were more like that because you're thinking of Zelda through the lens of Breath of the Wild now. Yeah, yo, the old school Zelda is like if you if you had the option to play as different characters within the Zelda universe, including Link and Zelda, and have different ways of playing through the like story, I guess I would consider it more of an RPG. Grand Theft Auto. No, I can switch through characters. You can switch through characters. I can play the game however I want to play. Well, they have like a whole no, role play, like uh... it's. Think What's about it like, like a server. Grand like, Theft Auto, I don't have Grand to Theft do... Auto is an interactive movie. I don't have to do no. I don't have to do the story. I can do everything else. I can like start uh, trading on stocks and influencing the market. Mm -hmm. um, I can go go do horse betting, make my life through that. I can so, just be yeah. a proper criminal. Think about the same with so, uh, Skyrim. Without and doing yeah, without can, doing any of the story the elements, quest. Isn't it? No, but Grand Theft Auto is you literally. Everything outside of actual storyline missions is padding. I love I love Grand Theft Auto Five. I really love it. Everything you could just play through the game doing main storylines and not touch anything outside of that. Mm. And you would you would your brother role played as a taxi driver in one of the Grand Theft Autos. <laughs> <laughs> but so that's it's just padding. It's it has no bearing on anything. Yeah, but that's that happens. So in, now your criteria now is in Dungeons you and Dragons, must be able happens. to influence the story through the choices that you make. It is you have one, of, you, do you, one you, of the major criteria is that. But so do you understand? You have a very strict sense. I of do RPG have a very strict, is. but that's that's why it bothers me so much because you oftentimes get RPG tacked onto so many games. Yeah. I'd like. I, I see, could but, be, see, but I could I, be I, more lenient. But then I don't understand why you wouldn't say Telltale's is not an RPG. That was because um, we had the Walking Dead Telltale games. We yeah, had, we had um, Batman, Game of Thrones. Yeah. 
Um, the World for Among Us, ooh, which is getting a season two, which I'm really excited about. But in those games, you normally play as one of the characters, don't you? Yeah, but you make choices that impact how the story plays out. Hmm. You and me can play like the walking dead and we can get very different results but then isn't that like a movie video game again it it it, it do you remember did you guys ever read those books i don't know if where you said turn to page like yeah five, those like decision. interactive story books yeah were, i i oftentimes found them incredibly shit mm. but like it was it's an interesting mechanic um and to me telltale is kind of like that it's like it's a, it's a choose your own adventure it's is it is not an rpg because it doesn't have a lot of those other elements it doesn't have um skill tree it does you can't like build on your character yeah. in terms of like yeah just following through on their backstory at like in more than just their choices um i do have i, I realize yeah, i recognize gotta, i have strict yeah. criteria i could be more lenient but a lot of the i'm just like frustrated that so often it'll be like rpg game i'm like fuck dude i'm playing horizon it's, zero dawn as yeah. an archer i can't play this as anything but like a stealth archer essentially mm. Um, it's just coming pop, in, it's popular. That's all. Coming in for the top ten, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. No. Nine, Disco Elysium. I don't, haven't don't know played. That one. Never heard of it till now. I actually no, I have heard. You, of you've hundred yeah. percent. It's it's a um bit of a puzzle game, but you like it's a detective with, has a drinking problem. Yeah. Um, no, no traditional combat, but there's a dialogue tree, skill checks. It's and almost you need to upgrade like turn... skills to pass skill checks. That's very D and D. Oh no, it's um. What is that thing where you can like go through a dungeon? It's it's a roguelite, right? Where you go through, you can you gain knowledge and skills, and you bring it back and do another run. It has a time, um, ele- what's it? A, a reversing time element to it. Okay. Um, Come, coming in at number eight, Elden Ring. I, it's got RPG elements, but it is essentially just one but long the, dungeon. The crawl. thing is, is that you are, bo- you are your the, character has no background. Yeah. It is what you you are tarnished, yes. and that's it. But so you, you cannot make any like you can make choices in terms of your skill points. You can make you can think about your background I mean, like, and how you've ended up. There's here. like five different endings. Does that change it in any that, way? Maybe, but the problem is all you can do in the world is to fight the next bigger badder monster. You can't you cannot go about you can't like sneak around them. You cannot like talk to them and engage with them. In fact, you can't really talk to and engage with many characters in the world of souls in like a meaningful way oh they'll give you quests which is very rpg they give you things to do yeah they tell um, you about things coming at seven and this is one i truly think is an rpg okay i feel like you're gonna say no but star wars and you said star wars knights of the old republic yeah. i can't i can't weigh in i have RPG. heard a lot about it so i'd probably I, if i played it i would probably say yes it's like because a classic. i've heard it's, it's a classic, classic. Yeah, okay yeah. well at least i know what i gift you for your birthday now i think you'd really enjoy you would enjoy dude I'm sorry i want a bit more of an expensive birthday <laughs> gift than like 30 wow. rand. you would uh-huh. enjoy treat nights me nice, of the old dude. republic treat me like a princess like nights you would enjoy it nights of the old republic 30 rand. you would it's hallowed like, the original is like it's kind of it's kind of like uh witcher one but like oh, yeah not really <laughs> yeah, well. it's it's got elements that are similar Sorry, I'm just want to see how much it costs on Steam. Witcher One RPG. Um, ooh, good one. It's so close, it's hard but because be- it's Geralt, because it is Geralt, and we know. If you we- want a hundred rand, be okay, happy with see, your hundred rand game. I see <laughs> how your your system works now. It I is, think I've got it. <laughs> you, yeah, are you got something like? I'm not saying it's a perfect criteria. <laughs> no, yeah, it's just. But it is. It, wait, would Inzoi or Sims be an RPG? <laughs> but hey, Sims is definitely an RPG. Uh, I what's, guess so. What's number yeah. one on that list? It's just, it's not okay, set in a fantasy world. So, okay, so something like Sims or Inzoi would be an RPG. Uh, coming in at six, uh, Skyrim. Uh, it's it's a very, it's for me, it's so great. I want to say yes. I want to say yes. I There's probably holes in this. And I have my own problems with saying yes, but yeah, I'm going to go with yes. Coming in at five, which I disagree with, is Breath of the Wild. It's not. Yeah. Uh, Fallout New Vegas, I do agree on. I have, I know it's one of the favorite ones. I can't, I can't weigh in because I haven't played it. Mass Effect, surely Mass Effect. Oh, Mass Effect I've has heard, to be. Once again, I've heard about Mass Effect. I've never played a Mass Effect. It's, but yeah. I know people love three. Like they love one, two, and three. And then Andromeda is just. We don't talk about Andromeda. We don't talk about yeah. Andromeda. But from what I've heard, I think Mass Effect is probably more or less a true RPG. Uh, Kieran, which are three coming in number two? Hey, really? God, so. Launching paths. Number one, yeah, can't argue. 
Baldur's Gate. There we go. Yeah, Baldur's Gate 2 and 3. Look, like 3 and 3. So I I, re- I recognize my fault. I recognize <laughs> I'm very strict here. Yeah, you got to yeah. But I will say like it is just almost like a plague that there's RPG is tacked onto things that don't need to have RPG tacked mm. onto them. And like crafting me- why does why does why does God of War have a crafting mechanic? Why does because it Because ha- it's a popular system that no, games have. I I fully understand why they because I think if they tried to do the exact same thing they did for the first three God of Wars, it wouldn't have been as successful as uh, the the new sequels have been. Yeah, that's true. And you know what? They have lots of RPG elements mm. that they're added in. I think God of War would have benefited from, instead of you crafting up armor and whatever, it would have benefited from you going on quests or dungeon crawls to find armor. Um, like the witch. You can do that also. He's not a crafter. Armor. He's a warrior. Like, well, also, he's not crafting. He takes it to the dwarves yeah. to craft for him. Fair enough. But it's, yeah. Either way, uh, that's my own personal gripe with it. <laughs> but that is a hybrid because that is a story game through and through as well. Yeah. That is that is all about the story. Yes. Um, and they are fighting moments. Wait, how, do, how do you feel about quick time events in games? It's a, it's an interactive movie. Yeah. Like, okay, so <laughs> interactive movie. For it. sure. Um, which is why I also say like The Last of Us you have like stealth elements and you have moments where you are almost in full control of Joel or um, Ellie. Ellie. But for the most part, those are points where you are just moving through different scenes or sets in order to get to the next story part. Yeah, it's a story right? to, shooter. To get to the next cutscene or quick time event. So that's, that's the way I think of it as opposed to like being, you know, as a game. I guess. Same with um, Drake. What's it? Uncharted. Uncharted is... You said Drake. I was like, what? Oh. <laughs> um, Uncharted, yeah. That's a story that, game. It's, it's, that's an R- no, that's an RPG. It's got RPG series. elements. Yeah. Is what the Uncharted we, series is an interactive about. film, my dude. It's like uh, Indiana Jones. I also... I, by the way, I'm not saying... I'm not using it as a... As a dor- I don't know to disparage like, the game. Yeah, I understand. But it's... it's it is something that could technically have been a movie, but they felt it could have like it could benefit from the player engaging in it a bit more. But you are still what's it is it, what's his name Nathan Drake. Nathan Drake. You are yeah. playing as Nathan Drake, mm. making all the same like choices that Nathan Drake would do. Generally, depending on your skill level, moving through levels as Nathan Drake, um, with like style or not very like style, depending on how like difficult it is. Um, but that's why, yeah, it's an interactive movie. It could be a film, but they chose to make it as a game because it, I guess you could like experience it more. Mm. Um, but yeah, sorry, that is my take on RPGs. I apologize, guys. Oh, wow. It's a, it's a. <laughs> you have, yeah. Now we know yeah, well, where what, your line is. Why don't we close it out on uh, the hottest new game on the scene right now? Have you guys checked out uh, Black Myth Wukong? Yeah. Okay, talk. I to me. I, I, Kieran, you did a bit of research. Who should do the research? I, I've, I just haven't cared because I was hyped on it 18 mm. years ago when we saw the first reveal trailer. Did Did, did you look it up to see if it was seven years ago? Because I'm feeling uh, like it might have four. four on, when yeah. I looked it up. No, guys, we got Black Myth, um, Black. But I think, like I said, it was. Yeah, you had a lot of really good insights when we talked about it. Yeah, last it was night. initially like a like a graphical test. It was like a. Oh, I don't. I don't even know what you would call it. Like. Stress it test. wasn't meant to be a game. Stress it test. became a game. It was like a concept. Um, you sound like a CEO trying to sell me on a game right now. I don't know. It's a concept. It's a concept. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, Black Myth Wukong, it's cool. It's like a, it's like a soulsy, kind of soulsy game where you're, you've got your bonfires or your shrines. You've got your big bad bosses that's basically like you're fighting through bosses. But it's... Also, not a Soulsy game because it's it's a story game at what at its heart because it's like it's like the whole myth or the law the law of Wukong from from Chinese culture is like that is the driving force of of the of the game where they're mm-hmm. basically telling you that tale, uh, Journey to the West, and then on top of that they've laid in you know RPG elements like we were talking about like you can you have skills and skill systems. Um, but it feels, it looks, it looks soulsy. It also looks kind of like God of War. It looks, ah, I don't know. What do you guys think? I think you're, you're very right. Especially when it comes to the boss elements, they give off the more of a, like a Dark Souls vibe when yeah. you have to, yeah. um, 
when uh, Wukong has to fight them. Yeah, and the combat is also quite soulsy. Yeah, I will say the combat is very smooth. Like yeah. the moves and the combinations you can like pull off as Wukong. And then there was like, I've seen people like pull off a little like Shadow Clone Ninjutsu and then he has yeah. like multiple and it looks statically very pleasing. I mean, I oh, it's a beautiful game. The, it's, the it's... transitions between because you can what's it seventy three different creatures that you can turn into or something like that. Yeah, you, um, you can turn. So sorry, I do stand fully corrected. I don't know why I thought we first heard about the game like years and years it was ago. Four years ago, but it was it was in twenty twenty. Um, maybe it's because um twenty twenty was a rough time. But it, I genuinely thought I saw this trailer. Like maybe in 2017 or something like that. Mm. Um, so either yeah, way, the environment is absolutely gorgeous yeah. and very Beautiful. reactive to the character. Um, oh, I'm remembering the first time I saw this now. <laughs> like the visuals are stunning. Yeah, let's be real. Um, it I love the opening. The opening um set piece for mm. Black Myth Wukong. That, that is cool. Where the the Him, he's challenging the yeah flying in seeing all the deities yeah deities 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 a whole huge army and it's just wukong just yeah like, like facing that all and that's down. how you start the game yeah that's how you sure. start it it's uh i think it's really good i'm uh it's only 800 rand now on steam and i just got paid today <laughs> so <laughs> i'm like oh, oh. <laughs> Should your I? pocket just starts like burning a hole <laughs> how are you gonna have time to play Elden Ring if you're playing Black Myth oh, yeah, Wukong I still need to get through Elden Ring man I haven't brought like I need to get through Elden Ring but do you know what I've been doing I've been playing I've been replaying a Pokemon um, a ROM hack mm. a Pokemon ROM hack a Pokemon Xenoverse it's probably up there as one of the best uh, ROM hacks uh, it was re- originally in Italian and then got translated into English and I've been replaying that because the first time I played it I completed it and then uh, recently they uh, they said that, you know, they're done making content for it because they're focusing on their own game, which they're releasing on Steam, the studio that did it. So now all the DLCs are out for it. So now I'm like, okay, I'm going to go back, start from the beginning, and I'll complete this game okay. with all the extra content. But I, I do need to maybe do... Prioritize. Uh, yeah, Elder Scrolls <laughs> instead. Because I, I went out and bought a remote, an Xbox controller, exclusively to, so I could play Elden Rings like properly. And that put me into a little bit of credit debt, and I just haven't. And I've only mm. played three hours of Elden Ring. Yeah, it's a tough one, man. That's a game you've got to just jump into, and you got to stay. Yeah. Try try to stay on that game as long as you can. I found I found it's been like very hard to like come back from work mm-hmm. and like try to like sit down and play Elden it's Ring. It's tough. I need like something like low stakes. It's one of those games well, where well, like well. you plan out. Well, a, well, well. You plan out like a whole day for Elden Ring, dude. You're like, I'm gonna plan out the next five hours. Like, what am yeah, I doing? Yeah, like it needs Elden to be like a weekend game for me. Yeah. I don't know. Sorry, Hushab, just to touch on something you just said. Uh, a while back, we talked about like the kinds of games we want, we enjoy playing. Mm. And I, I feel I don't know why you probably didn't make fun of me, but just based on your personality. I think you did make fun of me for the fact that I was like, I just want to switch off and not do anything too crazy. It's like watching an Adam Sandler movie instead of like a heavy emotional film. Hey man, um, Adam Sandler movies are fucking phenomenal. They, they're funny. I find them funny, <laughs> but they are just, you, they're bro. dumb. They just dumb. They are dumb. They man. are just dumb. They're dumb. You switch off. It's like I feel like that's why people enjoy like some reality TV. I don't think this is something I made fun of or brought it up. But I was like, I enjoy playing my cozy games because I just want to switch off. I want to like chill out. I got I have other stresses in life. I don't. And now you're coming out here saying like, you don't want to play Elden Ring because you don't want to, like you just want to feel something that's not like unstressful. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I don't know. You're going to have to go back through the archives and bring this up. I don't think this (laughs) happened. If any of our fans out there could really do me a massive solid and go through everything. I can't wait until we get like our first like fan that like makes like clips and just like re uploads them. (laughs) It's going to be the RPG clip, dude. (laughs) It's going to be you being you like, mean, this is an RPG. It's not a clip if it's 45 <laughs> no, no, no. minutes well, of you. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> fair, fair. RPG. You know, you know, like those clips where like people go out and like they make it and like it's like thirst traps of like their favorite podcasts or whatever. <laughs> it's like By weird the way, crash zooms. Yeah. Like- <laughs> In the comments, guys, I want to hear what you think about what an RPG is and how far, where's your line? Because Bjorn has clearly line? established his. Yeah, yeah, you're like all the <laughs> yeah. way. I'm oh, I'm alt right. <laughs> You're <laughs> I'm, crazy, bro. I'm, I'm I'm wherever the spectrum is. I'm on the furthest part of it. Yeah, you. <laughs> You're on the edge, dude. You're edging. I'm always edging. 
all, all the Andrew. time, every day. Um, but yeah, Black Myth Wukong. It is out now yeah. after 95 years, as I oh, was yeah. saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, beautiful game. It looks beautiful. We have to. Uh, we have to say it is not an RPG. I will say Plays it is really not well. an got, RPG. We got a pretty stacked. Um, oh wait, no, sorry. How that? Not how that was. Uh, Baldur's Gate three came out last year. I was just thinking like of the big games that came out this year for Game of the Year. That is a game that I'm scared of what? trying. How that was Baldur's Gate three. Why? Because You'll the disappear. investment that goes into the, those kind of games. But like, you love your role playing characters. I do, yeah. But I'm just thinking it, it'll be a lot to get into. Like I'll have to like, like I said for Elden Ring, set aside like time and plan out like when am I going to play the game? Because if I play it, play it, play it, stop for a week, I'm not going to want to play it after that mm. week. Mm. I, I, I have to keep at it. You want to like, you want to start and finish it. Yeah. Otherwise, I lose motivation. Man. Okay. Okay. But hey, beautiful game as well. I want to play it. Beautiful game. Yeah. Beautiful. What we do, we do a 24-hour stream. We sit down and I'm we in. don't I'll, stop I'll playing. I'll stream Baldur's Gate We're going to have... Oh, do you guys remember that That's episode different. of South Park where um, they play... It's, it's the World of Warcraft episode. Yeah, and they're yeah. all trying to beat the one guy. Mom! Mom! <laughs> it's happening again! And she comes down with like a bowl so he can shit like <laughs> into oh the bowl. Oh my God, man. <laughs> We need I think a, it's, it's one of the highest rated South Park episodes. It's it's a it's, really it's good iconic. episode. It's such a... How do you kill something that has no life? <laughs> you know, they actually worked with um, Blizzard uh, for that. Yeah. And they created like um a, their own server, which... Because obviously, when they go into the game, they're not using the South Park graphics. They're using the World of Warcraft yes. graphics. And they worked with Blizzard. They gave them their own server, which they could go in and play with. Oh, mm-hmm. Otherwise, you'd have like 50,000 yeah. people around them. Thor from Pirate Software's dad is... Basically, the, the person that was used as the reference for the man that has no life, yeah, the, like the 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 complete nerd, yeah, that yeah. they're trying to defeat in the game. That's so funny. What did they kill? Like fifty million boars to, to yeah. level up enough. Ah, uh, oh, which is actually ah, uh, I don't I don't want to spoil I don't want to spoil it because it's it's a it's a key plot point in the new Dimension Twenty um what, season. What boars? But <laughs> did you say whores or boars? I don't know. Do you? Do you I don't want to spoil it for anyone. I don't want to talk about it. Okay, well, if you... Um, if, I haven't watched it, so... If you're a D20 fan, close your ears now. I'm probably not going to watch it. So, one of the, like, in the new one, Junior High, which is obviously following on from the very first um, campaign that freshman they did. Year. Freshman year. Freshman year. One of the bad guys of the um, campaign are basically uh, metagamers, because Brennan Lee Mulligan, you know, hates it's metagamers. metagamers. Yeah. And so, they're like rival group are called the rat grinders because <laughs> they went into the woods and just killed rats Dude. to grind all the way up to an insane level. That's so cool. Ah, oh, so many Brandon, different references to so many different pieces of media. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, is there anything else you guys want to touch on before we end off? Oh, just while I'm on Dimension 20, I think. Um, <laughs> I think that that season at uh, junior high probably has like some of the most interesting and creative battle um like battle episodes where it's not like you know just like turn-based thing like brennan lee mulligan does like such a good job of like mixing different things like this is one that's like half pop quiz half like waves getting thrown at you Mm. for for um his party and there's another one when they're like in a haunted house and the characters have to make saving throws against being possessed and then they're not allowed to tell the rest of the party they are possessed until a uh, certain moment happens. Um, it's so it's so cool to come up because obviously in D anD D the the normal thing is like battle, like turn based battles, turn based battles, and then um and it's very like you're just using your skills and fighting against opponents, and then you like then you continue walking and interacting with your environment. Then battle like it's pretty linear in some mm-hmm. ways, but like bringing in interesting mechanics yeah. into battles is really cool. Brennan, and I think Brendan Mulligan has always been, especially over the past few months and. Only like with the main party, not like when he does like his little one shot yeah. with like uh, people who aren't from uh, the adventuring party. He's done such a good job of making the battles like very creative, especially mm. towards the end, uh, uh, towards the end of the series. I remember for Crown of Candy, he for the final battle, he had a very cool element where half of the time it is still your traditional turn based. But then like the other half, uh, each character party is like controlling squads like archers and lancers and like directing them on a battlefield. Oh, so it's like a That's grand cool. strategy yeah. kind of game. Yeah, really cool. I think, are you watching Crown of Candy right now? No, I'm not. Someone's watching Crown of Candy in my account. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. Wait, who's your account sharing? 
Mm-hmm. They actually they actually promote account sharing on um dropout. Dropout. Oh, I uh, don't know. That. I'm on the I'm on the Discord and they always like, "Ooh, share your account." Well, 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 boys. Well, well. Looks like I'm about to get back on the Dimension 20 train. Any Uh thank you very much for listening. My name is Bjorn. I'm Shav. I'm Kieran. And we didn't do that at the beginning of the podcast. Yeah, we forgot. But now, in case you were wondering who we were this whole time, now, now you know. know what the podcast is. <laughs> <laughs> if you Anyways, made it all the way been, to this part of the episode. If you made it all the way to this part of the episode, yes, yeah. go off, go off. Go off. Well, yes. Oh, uh, we'd like to say thank you. Yes. And You're absolutely welcome to comment down below. Yes. Let well, us know what your feelings are on RPGs. Yes. What? Where do you draw the line? Yes. Very, very classic. Yes. Um, what else does Bjorn say at the end of the episode? <laughs> Are you going to be picking says, up Black Myth Wukong? Oh, yeah, Black Myth Wukong. Yeah. Um, also, if you happen to be on the audio platforms. Oh, Spotify. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere you get Amazon, your audio. Give us Amazon. a download. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah, if, you listen they've, to this. if they've listened to it, they've <laughs> automatically <laughs> downloaded it. Um, but please give us a rating on whichever platform you're on. If you, I don't, once again, don't know if you can comment on audio platforms, but if you, you can't, can't, I keep telling you this. Do me a favor, go to, oh, add, who's have you checked out like Twitter account in the last like six months? It's still there. <laughs> but feel free to add us on any social media platforms. We are on TikTok, we are on Instagram, we are on X slash Twitter for who shops benefit. The only time where dead naming is okay. We don't say X, it's Twitter. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we appreciate you making it all wait this this far in the episode, and we hope you have a fantastic day. Like Kieran mentioned, if you have anything at all you want to comment on, don't hesitate to comment or message. Don't, don't or... forget to subscribe, road to 100 no. subscribers. <laughs> every time, every time, every time. Oh, man. We hope you have a great day. Yeah. Ciao. Bye. Right. Auf Wiedersehen. Tot scenes. Hamburger Google Bantuana. Is that children? Yeah. What was what was the other insults besides weir, weirboo? Wap, was it a Wapanese? Wapanese. Do you think people might bring back Wapanese? Because that feels very it, insulting. It, it has to be racist. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be racist. I feel like somebody called me like a Wapanese instead of like a weave. I feel very offended. That's crazy. <laughs>